Welcome back, Seth Bling here. This Super Mario World cartridge is the only one like it in the world. Well, okay, there's two actually, but that's it. Everything you're about to see in this video was made possible due to a new glitch in Super Mario World discovered by Cooper Harrison. He discovered that if you load certain data into the internal storage of a Super Mario World cartridge, you can trick the game into running custom code. He and I worked together to use this glitch to permanently jailbreak a real, unmodified Super Mario World cartridge. Well, two actually. In this case, by loading save file C from the jailbroken cartridge, we can trick the Super Nintendo into loading up a hex editor that I wrote with Cooper's help, along with the help of one Mr. Cheese. A hex editor lets you view and edit binary data. Every four bits is represented by a single character, 0 through 9 or A through F. This hex editor is very powerful. Not only can you look at and modify any data that's stored in RAM in real time, such as Mario's power-up state, but you can also look at all of the unmodifiable data that's stored on the cartridge's ROM. Here's a memory address you can edit to instantly beat whatever level you're playing. You can also edit any data that's stored in the cartridge's two kilobytes of internal storage. And that's what we're looking at right now. Here you can see all of the code used to install the jailbreak and run the hex editor itself. The jailbreak also includes a key combination with which you can disable the hex editor and have the game start running any code that you want. It'll run this code every frame, and the code is stored alongside the jailbreak within the cartridge's internal storage, so that any code you write for this purpose is portable along with the cartridge. Here's an example bit of code that was written by P4 Plus 2. It gives Mario telekinesis powers, allowing you to move and control one enemy at a time by pressing the directional buttons, and also to switch between enemies. There's a huge amount of flexibility in terms of the effects that you can create by writing code like this, I've even played around with adding support for the SNES mouse into the game, so keep a lookout on my channel for more on that topic in the next couple days. Essentially this jailbreak allows you to create custom gameplay mods and keep them on the game cartridge itself. And loading up these mods is as simple as loading save file C, then pressing select an arm, and boom, you're running modded Super Mario World. I want to emphasize once again that all of this works on normal, unmodified hardware. And not only that, but you can also install the jailbreak without using any custom hardware by exploiting various glitches in Super Mario World. I want to take a couple minutes to explain how I did just that yesterday in a live stream, and also go into the features of the jailbreak in a little bit more depth. But before I go on, I want to take a moment and thank Cooper Harrison once again. He's the one who discovered this save corruption glitch that makes the whole jailbreak possible. I also want to thank Mr. Cheese, I wrote the code for the hex editor, but Mr. Cheese really helped me optimize it quite a bit. And finally, I want to thank P4 Plus 2, who wrote the telekinesis mod that I've been using to demonstrate the modding capabilities of the jailbreak. Loading up the hex editor is very easy. Just insert your jailbroken cartridge, turn on your console, and load save file C. This will load a glitchy overworld and then immediately kick you back to the title screen. The hex editor is now active. At this point, load a different save file and you're good to go. From here, there's a lot of interesting things you can do. By default, the hex editor is looking at the first 256 bytes of memory. The game uses this part of memory for a lot of critical functions. For example, if you enter a level and edit address 1-9, which is on the second row and tenth column, you can directly edit Mario's power-up state. You can use the D-pad to move the cursor, and then L and R shoulder buttons to increment or decrement the value of the cursor. If you press both at the same time, it decrements the value very quickly. You can set Mario's power-up state to any valid state, and also any invalid state, some of which look pretty funky. Since you're editing RAM directly, it all happens in real time. However, like I said, you can edit any part of RAM you'd like. By pressing select and a D-pad button, you can look at other pages of memory. Notice that the numbers at the bottom left of the hex editor change as I do this. If I go to page 1-4 of RAM and edit address 9-3 within that page, I can trick the game into just beating the level immediately. Not only can you edit RAM, you can also edit the save data that's stored on the cartridge. If I browse to page FFFE of memory, I can actually look at the code that's running the hex editor from the cartridge's save data. It took a lot of work to pack all the code for the hex editor and also the jailbreak installer into less than 256 bytes, but you can see all of that code here. If I go to the right one page, to page FFFF, this page is special. I can write whatever code I want here and then activate it so that it runs every frame. 
Here, you can see I've entered P4 plus 2's telekinesis mod. To make this code run every frame, I simply press select plus R. Now I can play the game normally, except his code is also going to run every frame. P4 plus 2's telekinesis mod allows you to gain control of enemies by pressing X, and then cycle between enemies to control them. You can use the directional pad to move the enemies around. To disable the code and re-enable the hex editor, I just press select and L. Since this code is stored in the cartridge itself, it's very easy to run the mod on any console you'd like, just by bringing the cartridge with you. Finally, you can look at the game's compiled code that's stored on the game cartridge. All the code that runs the game is stored on ROM or read-only memory, so you can't modify it. But, theoretically, you could copy by hand all of the data on the cartridge onto your computer, and you'd have a functional ROM that would work with an emulator. However, given that there are about 500,000 bytes stored in the cartridge ROM, you might be at it for a while. Cooper and I wanted to make the jailbreak as accessible as possible. So we went about creating a procedure by which, with a Super Nintendo, a Super Mario World cartridge, three controllers and some way of holding down buttons on two of those controllers, and two multi-taps, which are devices that let you plug in extra controllers in your Super Nintendo, which you need for technical reasons that I'm not going to explain here. But using all of these things, you can install the jailbreak onto a Super Mario World cartridge in about an hour. We also came up with a way that you could copy the jailbreak from one cartridge to another uh, in about 10 minutes, and that procedure doesn't require any multi-taps, it only requires two controllers, but it does also require quite a bit of knowledge and skill. Now, I did both of these things yesterday in a live stream, and I want to show you a bit about how all that was done. About a year ago, I worked with P4 Plus 2 to inject the code for Flappy Bird into unused RAM. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. The procedure to install the jailbreak onto the cartridge was adapted from the original Flappy Bird injection procedure. Basically, I wrote 245 bytes of code into unused RAM. This code included two parts, the hex editor itself, and also some code which would properly corrupt save file C and then copy all of the jailbreak code onto the cartridge. This involved using glitches to write a very simple byte injector, and then spin jumping 245 times at various X coordinates to write the bytes. Upon the last spin jump, the game started executing the installer code, which, like I said, corrupted save file C, and copied all 245 bytes onto the cartridge. This also intentionally froze the game. That was all it took to install the jailbreak. The first thing I wanted to do after installing it was to copy it onto another cartridge to make sure I had a backup. To do this, I loaded up the hex editor and started writing some code into page FFFF. Again, this is the place where you can write your own code to run every frame. I wrote some simple code that would copy the jailbreak code from the cartridge into some RAM that's not used by Super Mario World. Then, without powering off the console, I removed the jailbroken cartridge, put in a fresh cartridge, and hit the reset switch. Since I never powered off the console, the contents of RAM survived the reset, and it was a portion of RAM that Super Mario World code never clears out because it doesn't use it, so all that data stayed in RAM. At this point, I performed a modified version of the Super Mario World Credits Warp speedrun. Instead of running code that would change the game mode and play the credits, I simply ran code that would call the jailbreak installer stored in that portion of unused RAM. This procedure is very quick to perform and only requires two controllers, although it's pretty difficult to pull off without quite a bit of practice. I actually made a tutorial a few months ago for the easiest way to do this, so check that out if you're interested. Once again, the game froze, but after a reset, the jailbreak was now installed on the fresh cartridge and was easily accessible by loading save file C. If you want to check out the notes that I used to perform the installation and cloning procedures, there's a link to that document in the video description. There's also a link to the archived livestream footage itself in the video description. This is such a cool glitch, and I want to reiterate one more time, all the credit for the discovery of this glitch goes to Cooper Harrison. He's the one who made this all possible. A jailbreak that's permanently stored on the cartridge is kind of like a holy grail of video game hacking. And so I'm really glad that he came to me and that we could work together on this project. 
because it was super fun. Uh, in the video description, you'll find links to the videos that I talked about, as well as a download link for a save file that you can use with a BizHawk emulator. And so you can play around with the jailbreak for yourself. There's also a manual that you can use to understand what are the features of the hex editor and how it all works. That's about it. Thanks for watching.